Okay, so today I'm really, really excited to bring you another episode of Discover Libya because today we're in the fantastic, uh, extraordinary, amazing city of Liptis Magna. Um, it's here in Khumas, one of the coastal cities that we visited before in Libya. And um, I'm just really so excited to, to show you all about this place. I came here as a child before a long time ago on school journeys and stuff like that. And it was just, you know, to, it's just like stepping back in time into a historic period in time. Here behind me we have the plaque showing when Libya was declared a World Heritage Site and it was in 1982. And that's basically stating to everybody that Liptis Magna is not just a Libyan city, but it becomes a world city. It becomes a city for everybody to come and visit and to come and have a part of. Um, if you look now, and for the first time as well in the history, as far as I know, this city is going to be recorded by our program, Discover Libya and the Libya Observer, in 360. So we're going to give you the option to have a look at the whole city at any time, at any place, um, that we visit today. You can look all around the different uh, historical parts and um, you, you're in control of this documentary today. Um, so basically, if you look to the right of you now, or sorry, if you look to the left of you now, you'll see um, what is called the, the Triumphant Arch. And this arch was built um, in a welcoming gesture to uh, Septimo Severos, who was a son of the city. And by the way, this city... A lot of people think that this city is a Roman city. It's not really a Roman city. It was started by the Phoenicians before. Um, in about 700, 800 uh, BC, they would have traveled along the coast here and they would have um, saw the, the harbor of Liptis Magna and found it as a, a good place to uh, harbor their ships and port their ships, dock their ships for the night. And a, a trade route, it became like a trade route. It wasn't until later on that the Romans and, uh, came along and created this fantastic and amazing city that you're going to see today. So to the, to the left of you here is the, um, the arch that was built for Septimor Severos, who was a son of Liptus Magna, and who on his journey, his amazing journey in his life, went to uh, Rome, became one of the fighters in the, in the, in the foreign legions of, in the legions of the Roman Empire. I think it was called the Third Legion. And um, throughout the, the, the history of the Rev what happened in Rome, he uh, 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 in, became eventually the Emperor of Rome. And so when he eventually returned to Liptis Magna as the son of this city and an Emperor of Rome, they created this arch um, to, to welcome him. If you look now to the right of you on your 360 viewer, you'll see a, a road that was the, the road leading from the south into the city. And this road would have led all the way to a place called Terhuna now. And that's, this is where all the farms would have been, all of the grains would have been sown, all that kind of stuff. And so this would have been the route where the carts would have entered in and out of the city with, their, with the goods that was being... Um, um, brought into the, the dwellers and the, and the dignitaries of the city of Liptus Magna. So I'll tell you something, as far as I'm concerned, I'm so excited about today. I hope you're going to enjoy this program. Um, this is going to be for the first time, as I said, on 360. So let's do this. Let's go. Assalamu alaikum. Hello Mahmoud, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm so excited to be here today, it's fantastic. You're welcome. And we got lovely weather today as yes, well. Yes, very lucky. Yeah, brilliant. I'm so looking forward to this amazing place. I've come as a child, I know what it's like. Tell us. Well, <clears throat> it's been very quiet lately here, but nowadays a lot of people, Libyan people start to come and hopefully tourists will come again here to Liptis Magna. Starting that, to love their culture again and love their history again, well, that's a good here, thing. It's here, always here, but you know, these people, they want to come and enjoy the, the history and the heritage they have here. And what an amazing history, huh? Yes. And so tell us, what, what are we going to do today? I'm so looking forward to today. Well, you are in Liptis Magna. This is a magnificent site. And uh, what we're going to see, Liptis Magna, actually today, it's only about 40% of the site has been discovered, even though it's a, a huge 
no city. Way. 40%. But yeah, if you look around here, the city today, you can see 60% uh, of it is still buried underneath the sand and the mud. Wow. So there is a lot of potential is still hiding wow, underneath the sand and the mud. Right wow, now. amazing. Yes. So tell me if, if now we're, we're filming this in 360 for the first time yes. as well. This is, I'm, I'm excited to, to, to show people they, they have control. Yes. So for example, now if the viewer looks up, for example, and what they see here, what, tell, tell us a little bit about what now, they're looking at Now, we met at the intersection of uh, one of the two main streets, Leptis Magna. This street here goes north to south. This is Cardo Street. goes from the north to the sea, mm -hmm. all the way to about 44 miles to the south, to a place we, we know nowadays called Tarhuna. Okay. This is where they have a lot, a lot of olive oil trees and uh, olive oil presses. Okay. And then they bring it to Leptis Magna and export it from here. Wow. And then... This intersection here, mm -hmm. this is called uh, Dikemanus. Start from Alexandria in Egypt, all the way to Carthage in Tunisia. Egypt. Very long road. Egypt. This is the two names, very common names in any Roman city, Cardo and Dikemanus. Wow. You can find them in any Roman city. Yeah. Now, now, they built this it's arch beautiful. here, yeah. yeah, at the intersection of two main streets here, mm -hmm. as you said, to welcome the ember in his hometown. So this is a triumphal arch for our local son, Sephiros, Septimus. Mm -hmm. Okay, and as you can see, when the Italians came here in the early 1911, mm -hmm. they started doing the excavation and the restoration here. So this arch was almost buried and destroyed by the, you know, the earthquakes and the wars and everything, mm -hmm. and buried underneath the sand. Once they cleared the sand and the mud, they found the four bases of the arch, and this is how they figured that the arch would look like this. Okay. So the Italian done most of the work to restore the arch. I see. All the and, stones. And, and, and with these artifacts, let's have a look. With these artifacts here, these would have been... As you can see, all the pieces are original pieces. This okay. is limestone, are original. Some of the carving that you see here, if it's marble, then it's original. Fantastic. Otherwise, this is, uh, 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 you know, uh, copies. Co remade, uh, the original ones, a lot of these original carving, you can see them at the Tripoli Museum. They've been placed there for many, many years. Okay, to protect okay? them, yeah. But originally, uh, generally, we're talking about this carving. These carving represent the, the festival where the Imp is surrounded by his people. People are dancing in the street. People bringing animals to be sacrificed during the, the visit. Uh, yeah. This is all a celebration. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it's a go. celebration. And so any of these have a sem... Uh, th 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 that's what they resemble. Gifts, the yes, the yes. Gifts, gifts uh, celebration, everything. The royal family gathering, Ember with his fa uh, family, his wife, Julia Domna, his two sons, Gita and Caracalla. Also, you can see in the corner there, uh -huh. you can see the four eagles. Do, these yeah. are the sign of victory. And that's why they call this arch the triumphal arch. When he became as the emperor. Yes, or he yes. Became Fantastic. I remember when I was young, and there used to be uh, the arch surrounded by uh, fans, and they used to have wooden boxes. So they used to gather all these small bits together, uh, mm -hmm. like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay. Once they have a clear picture, then they glue it together and stick it in the wall. And put it back. Fantastic. So they have so done a magnificent job. So tell us, Mahmoud, if, uh, so uh, what what some of the highlights that we have today? Give it, give well, today it's a, it's a big side, as I said, but we're going to cover the most important sides and the uh, the, the, the highlights of the city. Okay. Now, uh, our next place where we're going to head nowadays, we're going to take uh, to, uh, right here, uh, Dikamonus, all the way to the Hadrian Bath. Yeah. Huge building, a magnificent place, and you can see the festication and the decoration and the, uh, the, the art of the, uh, uh, the Romans, 2nd uh, uh, century AD. And this road here would have led to? All the way to the sea, the old form, the old city, where the Phoenician lived in the first place. And this road? This road, as you can see, that gate that leads us to the western gate to the city. It's called the Oya Gate. Oya is the old name of Tripoli. Uh -huh. So in the old days, when people want to go from the west side, that's the entrance to the city from there. Fantastic. Listen, Mahmoud, I'm looking forward to today. Okay. Let's do this. Yeah, okay. Let's okay. So oh, looking forward to this. So we're going around to the which baths? It's uh, Hadrian Bath. Uh, it's one of the uh, uh, places where people hang out in the afternoon after the, uh, a very heavy day of work and uh, uh, you know business and everything. Uh, people tend to go to the uh, uh, bath to for like uh, for uh, you know to have some rest, to have a bath. It's like a spa, what we call a spa today, a retreat. Yeah, it's like a recreation center. Okay. They do everything. They talk about business, war, everything else. Okay. 
Okay, let's so, do this. Let's, uh, let's this go the, and see it. Yeah, so this is where they hang out. Okay, so we're on our way into this bath. Huh? It's a big complex. It's got all the important section in any Roman city. Uh, uh, the uh, swimming pool, the hot water baths, the cold water baths, the uh, uh, swim, swimming pool, everything. So it's a big complex. Oh, I can't look. Everything here, Mahmoud, in this place is so grand and so big and you can just see the sim symmetry being used in all of the streets and everywhere. Yes. I mean, like when we walk in now, for example, here and you see this X in, in the street below us and you can see that everything is built to beautiful symmetry. Um, you can only just imagine what it was like back in its old day. Yes. Tell us more about where we are today. Well, now we enter another alley in the city. Where right now we are in the uh, Balestra, a place called Balestra. This is where people come uh, to do some sports, get sweat, and then from here they enter to the bath, the so great the, Roman bath. So if the viewers now look, take to the left of you, you'll see what is called the old Roman or Adri Adri Hadrian bath. Adrian bath. Yes. And uh, now if you keep going straight, you can see the big uh, building there. This is the uh, Nymphium. It's uh, another small uh, temple belongs to the nymphs. This is where the young women used to come and with the green fountain in the front. Uh, so this, the whole area actually, one of the sections, uh, the right section to the city here. Mm -hmm. so, you, so I can imagine like what they do today in these days and to, to think that back so long ago they would yes. have known how to do this. Like these days they go to the gym and yes. then they go to the sauna. It's exactly what they would have done yes. centuries ago. After a heavy day of work, they come to the uh, bath to enjoy themselves with a hot or cold or a wet bath and everything. And then to meet each, uh, you know, to meet each the other here, to socialize place. and everything. Uh -huh. So And then come here then uh, uh, and then train as well, work yeah, out. Yeah, that's before they go. It was an important part yes. of it to train your body and yes. be in... And the reason they have Hadrian bath in this area because behind the building we have a wadi or a river. It's called Wadi Libda or the river of Leptis Magna. So the Romans have built dams and reservoirs so they can have water supply all year long from the wadi. So water supply was very important and the reason they have the bath in this area because of the water supply from the back. I must, uh, you, have to, you have to give applause to the architects of that time, yes, they were amazing, they knew, they knew exactly where to build everything. The else. other thing to remember about Liptis Magna is the, the sophistication of the architecture here. Uh, where we, wherever we go, we're going to see a massive uh, use of uh, marble everywhere. And the marble, as you can see around us here, you can see the Cipollino. These columns are called the Cipollino marble. These are from Greece. Inside the bath, we're going to see marble from Italy. We have some local so marble. Even the marble was shipped from different parts Everywhere. of the world. Even from Aswan, we're going to see the red granite from Aswan, Egypt, all the way from Aswan. So it's, wow. a, it's, it's a very luxurious city. They spent a lot of money. Uh, they were wealthy and they had no money, uh, no problem in spending money in their city. Uh, a building for our city for the high class. And exactly. For the Built to last. Yes, definitely. To sum it up. Definitely built to last. Yes. Can we see the baths? Yes, let's go. Let's then. go. Yes. Is there any chance we can take a bath now? Well, I hope. I hope not. I hope the water is hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just waiting for all the lovely water to come in here so I can have my bath. Is it gonna? It's too bad. This year has been very dry year. As you can see, very little rain came. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get much more than that but little... I remember, I, I remember once we came to the pool here, it was full to the top from the rain here. The rainwater? Yes, I've seen it in my life. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. But uh, as you can see, this year is very, you know, very yeah. quiet and not very much. dry. Yeah. Not much. Uh, now we're... we are inside the pool right now, as you can see, but you can see the original marble uh, attached to the wall there. At the top, yeah, yes. At the top. And the mosaic in the floor. Uh, as you can see in some places here, you can see the original mosaic in the floor. Yes. So you can picture the whole bath here, full of water, marble on the side, uh, and mosaic in the floor. And this was the this was the outdoor pool. Yeah, outdoor pool. An outdoor pool. Yes. So there's inside, still, still more to come. This oh, wasn't yes. even the main pool. Yeah. Inside, we're gonna see the cold water baths, the hot water baths, the warm the tibidarium. Caldarium, Laconica, even the sweat bath, the sauna. 
So it's a bit complex as you're going to see today. I don't think you're going to get me out of this place. Let's go. Okay, we have a lot to see. We have a lot to see and I think I'm going to stay here for the night. Mahmoud, again, everything's so symmetrical. I, as soon as you walk in, you see the lines are perfect. And so we just walked in now into what was called, what this would have been uh, up here behind you? Yes, this is the whole area here called the frigidarium, cold water bath. So now you are inside one of the baths in here with cold water. Uh -huh. uh, what's amazing here is the restoration inside here. You yes. can see all the marble behind you. It's yes. all original marble, even though it's been restored. But yeah. the marble itself is original. The original pieces of yeah, the actual the bath. And here also, uh, as you can see, these columns, one of the biggest columns you see, like this magnet, very huge Cipollino columns. Of the Come over here, let's see, let's see this over here, these big, huge um, um, marble columns. Uh, they're absolutely gigantic. Yeah. So this would have been a really high ceiling. Yeah, about maybe, you, about, uh, maybe 15 meters high, uh, the ceiling here. And even though they have discovered some pieces of the, uh, the decoration you used to have at the top of the ceiling with some kind of mosaic in here. Okay, and so, uh, and this, this slab here? Would, it should be at the top. Of at the, the top. This capital here. Absolutely gigantic, it's yeah. so big. And uh, they believe that some of the columns are missing from this area. They're being shipped away from here. We're going to talk about this later when we uh, reach the, uh, the sea. Okay. I'll show you. Okay. So some of the columns, big columns like these, are missing. And we're going into now the next part, which is? We still have the uh, Tibidarium, warm water. We okay. call it nowadays, we call it jacuzzi. Okay. And then we have the, co uh, the Calderium, the hot water. And then we have the sauna, La Conica. Wow, let's go. <laughs> let's do this. Okay, Mahmoud, tell us more what's okay, happening. Okay, now again. we finish with the cold water bath. Mm -hmm. Now we enter the new area. It's called the Tibidarium, just warm water bath. We have one, two, and three. You see, nowadays we call it jacuzzi. Mm. People, you know, just, just warm, not hot, not cold water. Mm -hmm. And behind the building, we have boilers. So they heat up the water, and through the pipes, they bring the water in here. Wow. And as you can see now, very beautiful marble attached. Yes. Age, all this marble is original marble. So people would sit around here and socializing and enjoying the water. So here. there was actual boilers outside exactly. that heated the water yes. that brought two pipes in towards these baths. Yes. For that time, was there any, like that must have been, uh, you know, very rare or maybe unseen before for that time. Well, <coughs> The Romans, they have used, a lot of people ask how the people use, what, what they use for energy. In those days, people grind olive oil, take the oil to use it as a, a torch or lamps, mm -hmm. and then they take the residue to use it with the burner. Ah, I see. So the olive oil residue is a very good source of energy. Wow. It gives a lot of heat. Before the time of what we have fossil fuels exactly. now, it was the yeah. original version. So I think that's one of the main source of energy in those days. And so in here there were, there were these three baths. Three just warm water baths. And if now, the viewer now looks in the 360 again, you can see again the, the, the arch behind you, just how luxurious and how... This area is covered with ceiling here. It's all domed ceiling. Wow. With a lot of uh, decoration. And as you can see, still marble attached here. The original building, it will be all covered with marble. All the bo the air, the bottom area here, yes. like so usually just for just for added luxury and just yes, for yes. yeah. So like as you can see, limestone, and then they put a plaster, and then marble at the top. So it's, it's, it's almost three, la three oh. layers. Oh, it would have been marble all the way. All the way to the oh, top. Okay, I thought it was just at the bottom. No, 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 no all, all the way. The way. Wow. Another Fantastic. kind of marble here. That's Italian marble. Very beautiful columns in here. Brought from, I from Italy. Italy. Italy, yes. All the way shipped it yes. over. It was past yes. Home from home, huh? We have a collection of marble from everywhere. Wow. Okay, so let's go and let's get the, now, the, the next, next section. Now, the next one will be the uh, calderium, hot water bath. Okay. So we're coming in now into... This is the uh, hot water bath, calderium. Wow. Okay, we have about five baths in here with hot water. And this area will be covered with all with marble. And this is where people would come and have a massage here. They, they used to apply olive oil to their skin and have a massage, relax in here. And also they use uh, uh, some kind of metal scrapers to, to clean up their skin with. And we found some of these scrapers in the museum here. Wow. So this is where they do here, what they do here. 
the interesting thing about, as you can see, it's all covered with the ceiling here, and you can see traces of the uh, what's left from the ceiling at the top. It's okay, a mixture. So the viewers should look up now. Yes. Look up to the top here. You'll see what the gentleman is explaining to us now at the moment. Yes. This is what's left from the Roman concrete at the top. It's a very sophisticated uh, concrete, Roman concrete. It's a mixture of sand and clay and mud and small bricks. So okay. uh, the Romans had invented uh, their own kind of concrete. And this days. would have covered all, all the way, the way all the way, all the way to the top. And stayed in position. Yes. Wow, such okay. amazing. Now, uh, as you can see the pool here, uh, and behind, you can see the water reservoirs. This is one of the water tanks that we have here. And beside, behind the trees here is the wadi. This is the wadi libda. Oh, this is where yeah. the water supply would come from. Can we go and have a look towards here? Yes. Let's, let's have a look and bring the viewer with us. So this would have been one of the hot water baths here? Yes. And how, the, the same way, was this a fire somewhere here? Yeah, the or? burner in the back. Or the burner outside? Outside, and, and this is just a, a water bath, hot water bath. But how would that heat would have come, come in? Or and was you can it? see, if you come closer here, you can see the burner. Uh, usually they build them outside, mm -hmm. behind. You okay. And here also, okay. And the furnace is like this. So all the, all uh, the furnaces outside. And the water would have traveled hot. Exactly. So it would have had like a, a circulation, system, circulation yes, system. Exactly. Okay, now I get you. Yeah. Uh, also, the, uh, as you can see the, the siding here, you can see the terracotta pipes. There's the pipes that go all the way to the top. The archaeologists think that these pipes work as. as can we as, see them? Yes, these are the terracotta pipes. And we can see them here and also in the sauna. Mm. Okay? This is for the hot air. Now, once the hot, the, the water is heated, the, uh, the, the, the viper or the, the, the vibration of the water goes up and start to con condensate, coming back as water drops through the pipes back into the water. Wow, so we have a circulation of amazing. water here. That's You're not amazing. supposed to have a mess of water laying around the room here. That's true. What amazing archaeologists or architects. Yes. Absolutely fantastic. So uh, they thought of everything. And to actually, they would have built these back then, like terracotta square, like hollow yeah, pipes. Each one is about, uh, it's rectangular shapes. And to each have one about 30 to 40 centimeters in length. And they build them at the top of each other to make a long pipe. All the way. Yes. That's amazing. And you can see traces of these pipes in the wall there, broken. True, yeah, I can see it. Wow, that's amazing. I hope the viewers are taking in everything that's happening here. You can see it's like a, an amazing large big sauna area, like what we would have today, but on a grand scale. I don't like even in some of the, the largest uh, spa recreational centers that I've been to now are probably not as luxurious as this uh, for back then. Like, you know, to think even to have that kind of a system where condensation would have risen with the, with the pipes and came drop as droplets back down into the pipes. It's, uh, it's amazing for that time. And later on, I will tell you by the end of the tour, I will tell you how many people used to live here. Now, just to look at the scale of the, uh, all the facilities that we have in the city, but later I'll tell you how many you, people used to live in, in its peak time. Wow. Okay. Let's go and do this. Okay, now we have one more room to, to show you here, which is the sauna or the laconica. The actual sauna itself? Yeah, this is what we know now as a sauna. Uh, they call it La Conica. Oh, fantastic. It's, uh, it's wet bath. Oh, it's uh, just even separate from these hot yes, baths? Yes, yes. Okay, brilliant. So where are we now at the moment, eh, Mahmoud? <coughs> yeah, now, as you can see, this is the, um, the Turkish bath, as we know nowadays, but they call it La Conica, that's wet bath. Mm. Now, if you look around here, you can see this is the floor level. Right now, we are underneath here, the floor. Oh, wow. The floor yeah. level is supposed to be up to that level. So, that, sorry, Mahmoud. So, this here is the actual floor, floor exactly. level, the original floor level. Yes, and you can see these tiles, they're supposed to hold the floor. Like to support columns. the floor from underneath. Okay, and what was the reason for that? Okay, now, there is the furnace. They heat the water and the hot air and the steam so will come from second, underneath. So, hang on one second. So, if the viewers on the 360... The whole room. The whole if room you look over to, the, to this, this side here, you see that the, 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 the furnace would have been here okay. and hot water? The hot air. Hot steam. Yeah, hot steam will come oh. from underneath the floor. Okay, which would have okay. he superheated the actual floor itself. Yes, and then along the wall, you can see the pipes. Okay, yes. Okay, yes, so yes, the yes. hot air and the steam will go through the pipes into the room. So you, ha you have a room full of hot air and the steam. Wow, that's amazing. And that's in English, they call the hypercore system. 
Wow, wow, for that time. Okay, now you can see the pipes here. It's all hidden pipes. Mm -hmm. And then they put the plaster and then marble. So these pipes, it's all hidden pipes. You don't see them at all. Wow, amazing kind of work. And these go all the way... Up to the top. You can see traces of them going all the way to the top. Yes, I can see that, yeah. And so, is this like some kind of a section that they've rebuilt to show... Exactly, the... exactly, to show you so what kind of floor we used to have. Here. So can we see and show the viewers here, over here? Mosaic, mosaic floor. Mosaic floor. Marble on the wall. Pipes, hidden pipes. Again, very luxurious. Yes. So, and they have another sound on the other side of the bath. It's uh, all symmetrical in shape. The wow. whole complex is symmetrical in shape. Amazing, amazing. And this, this is now the, 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 the this area was all called the uh, balestra and the the, ba the, the bath. bath. This the is bath. a part of the uh, big Hadrian bath. It's a complex. Hadrian baths. Yes. Amazing place. Uh, where are we going to have some look at somewhere else now? Yeah. Now we are heading to the public bath. Oh, there's another one. Toilets, bath. public toilets. Oh, the Remember? toilets. Okay, yeah, the, yes. this is in our way out. Okay. We can, we're going to stop and see the uh, the public toilets. Let's go. Very interesting this. place. Let's see it. So, what is this, Mahmoud? This looks unusual. Yeah, this is the restroom now. Well, it's called latrines, the public latrines. This place is a, a, a huge place. can have mass, massive. Uh, people you know massive number of people coming at once use the facilities here up okay. to 50 people more than 50 people wow. they can come and, and, and yeah. use the toilets here okay. and socialize at the same time okay let's have a seat and relax we, we could have a chat here let's, together let's, let's go back in time and what, yes. what it was like uh, relaxing relaxing yeah, very relaxing here uh. now as you can see very very um, cold marble sometimes mm -hmm. in winter Mm -hmm. But still very cozy and very relaxing. It is relaxing. Uh, yeah. This is the the clean water drain, so okay. people after use the uh, the toilet, they can use the water for cleaning up, uh, with the you oh. know mugs or sponges for okay, cleaning up. Okay. Okay. Uh, where people sit around here, it's all covered with the ceiling, as you can see. Mm -hmm. So we have a shade here. Only in the middle part, it's open for fresh air, and of course, with 50 people, you need a lot of fresh air. Sure, definitely. <laughs> right. Yeah, I can imagine. And now another interesting thing about the toilets here, the public toilets, once they clean the baths and the pool from inside, mm -hmm. they have a drain that will come through the latrines to flush the toilet with it. Okay, so it would have been just... Uh, exactly, uh, after they clean the pools, the water would come... To, a way to recycle the, the water too, exactly. yeah, instead okay. of just waste. Okay, so to, to flush the toilet here, once they clean the pool, the come will come through here uh, for cleaning up. Another thing, they use the ashes from the burners to dump it down here to get rid of the smell. Oh, good idea, yeah, good idea. Okay, so that, another interesting idea yeah. that they have in these public toilets here. Wow, that's amazing. Yes. So it actually wouldn't have been that bad of a smell if you have all of these taking these kind of uh, precautions and their uh, Of air course, and, with the, a lot of people the, using these facilities, yeah, you have to... Yeah, being flushed all the yes, time with yes. water, that's, you know... Another interesting idea that a lot of people ask if these facilities are used by men or women or oh, together that's true, yeah. yeah which is a very good uh, question mm. and of course uh, since those days men were more dominant in, than women mm -hmm. so uh, men of course were you know they use it uh, mostly men mm -hmm. but maybe and there is a question mm -hmm. mark between this maybe they have different times for women but not together Oh, there wasn't together. It no, wasn't I don't think they had uh, together because most of the uh, the ins inscription that we've seen and the stories being told, it's all men. True. Okay. Okay. I see, yeah. So maybe they have different times for women, but not together, as far as I know. Okay. And as the viewers, maybe if you have a look and see some of these places, and it's perfectly, you know, carved out, and you know. It's even the, the, the gap is not made too big, so probably it won't let as much smell back out. And it's covered from here, as you can see, you don't see nothing down here. From the side here, it would have been, if you look over here, the side would have been covered as well, you know, to stop any smells escaping back out and stuff. And the fresh water from here, all carved out of the marble. Unbelievable amount of work they put into this place. So, Mahmoud, tell us what, what this beautiful place is now. Yeah, this is the uh, Nymphium. It's a temple for nymphs. Uh, it 
was built at the intersection or in the city square here. As you can see, very beautiful uh, uh, site here. Okay. Uh, the nymphs being the nymphs young, is uh, uh, the the young women used to come here, pray to their gods. You can see the niches here where they used to have the statues, their gods, different gods that they worship here. Okay, if the view is now on the 360 as well, turn right around to the far side, you'll see the niches that Mahmoud is explaining about and the, 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 the facade or the entrance of the actual temple itself. Uh, as you can see now, the, uh, the, the, the temple here used to be a, a semicircle in the middle. But because of the floods that we had here, uh, not very long ago, uh, the latest one was in 1988 that made a lot of destruction to the t temple here. Okay. And you can see the big chunk uh, or half of that semicircle falling back as a big chunk there. Oh, I see it over just over here. Yeah, yeah. so that used to be a semicircle here. Oh, and half of it has fallen back on itself. I yeah, see that's that. uh, yeah. the latest destruction from the wadi. Okay, uh, so there's the a, a stairs in the back that lead to the second floor, uh, niches, uh, marble. Uh, a very beautiful place here. Is this part um, the, the public area? Yes, here. public area. So we're still area. on the street here. Yes. Uh, so the people would have came off the street. This is like a pathway. Yes. The, the inside of the temple is still in behind. Exactly. Here it would be like a water bath, like uh, uh, full of water here, and the niches there. And even, uh, yeah, you know, there's a picture of Mussolini. They said that when he came to Liptis Magna in 1936, he had a speech he, uh, in this, in this uh, spot, okay. from that balcony in the second floor. Oh, okay, I see that. If you can see now the viewers in the 360, if you look up over to this side here, it's like a balcony that still remains there till now. And uh, to think that Mussolini was there giving a speech when he was at this great city. You can see the view here from the picture here. Mm -hmm. This is a simulation computer picture. Okay, so there would have been, in, in each of these niches would have been, and the niches are, are two stories high as well. So you had the statues at the bottom, statues at the top, going all the way around the semicircle. I'm sure that was a beautiful facade to, to, to uh, see. Another thing, you can see the columns at the top. These marble columns from, from uh, the, the red granite, these are from Aswan. That's the kind of marble being brought all the way from Aswan in Egypt. The actual, the actual column itself? Yes. Okay, wow, so another, so another we are from Italy, we are from Egypt. Yes. Brought all the way here just to yes. give a different color probably just to the... Beautiful decoration here done with the marble as you can see and all these pieces still shattered around here. Yeah. Uh, very beautiful handcraft here. Yes, you can see that. We're heading toward the uh, new forum or the Severn Forum, but now before we reach that, we enter the new street called the Colonnated Street, about 600 meters in length and about 250 meters in width. I think the viewers of the 360 should look behind you now yes. at the moment. Yes. And this you will see the street. Yeah, this should take us all the way to the harbor from here. Okay. Okay. Now uh, this street is supposed to have 250 columns to the right and 250 columns to the left. Where? Only one column is still standing, where? and the rest is all collapsed. Where are all those columns? Uh, lots of stories being told about these columns here. One of the stories being told about the French council, his name is Claude Lemaire in the 16th century AD. He, what was he doing in here? Well, he was a French council in Libya, so he shipped more than 600 columns from Liptis Magna, uh, and they, he used them to build the Palace of Versailles in France. Really? Yeah, this I've is seen a, the Palace of Yeah, well, this is a, a very uh, true story being told with many different sources. Okay. Now, if you look at the uh, the bases of the columns here to the right or to the left, mm -hmm. every two and a half meter there's a base of a column. Okay. So this is where the columns used to be. Of course, in the middle here, it's open air road, but in the side, it's all covered sideways. 
Oh, so there would have been like a roof on either side. In the side, in the, the a roof in the side. For people but to walk in the shade. Exactly, but in the middle here is a uh, open air the road. Horses and carts yeah. to travel through the yes. Okay, so now that will take us to all the way to the the biggest the place in Liptis Magna, the or the new forum or the Severum Forum. This is where the action will take place. Okay, brilliant. Starting to get uh, warm, uh, Mahmouda. Yes. Well, I think it's time to go to the refriger uh, refrigeratorium. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, so we're after coming off the col col what is it called? The col this is the colonnaded street now. Street. Now we are entering the the big forum here. Okay. But before we enter the forum here, you can see the the, the doors here. These big doors are shops. So these are shops facing the colonnaded street in here. So if the viewer now in the 360 now turns around, follows us here, you can see on the right and and left here. Yes. Uh, would have been like many, many shops all yes, the way along. All the lo along the way here to the forum. Selling these all are kinds shops, of goods, yes. all kinds and of... And of course, these are all covered sideways here. Uh, from the, these big massive columns would have held yes, the roof of this yes, section yes, here, yes. keeping people in the shade. Of course, uh, as you can see, all this area needs a lot of work. You can see uh, it still needs a lot of restoration, this area. Yes, yeah, But sure. uh, the doors are still there, it's still, you know, intact. And were very um, well made, the kind of entrances. Yes. I mean, there's a, I'm sure these people would have paid a lot of taxes probably. For of course, there will be more rent. shops inside the forum as we enter the forum now. Okay. Okay. Prada. Exactly, yeah. this is the um, Chandelier. Okay, I All see, right? I see. Uh, as you can see, the forum here is open air in the middle, more than 100 meters in length and uh, 80 meters in width, open air. In the oh. side in here, as you can see, there's some columns. Mm -hmm. Okay, and at the top of the column, we have these reconstructed arches with the Midoza heads that goes at the top of the columns. Okay, so All the, the way. viewers on the 360 you should look over now to this part what Mahmoud is explaining. So these would have sat along all the way. All the uh, top of the columns. Across the way, yeah. All the wow. top of the columns, all the way around with the Medusa hid. I see. Hid the Medusa. And these hid the Medusa are supposed to protect the people from the evil eye. To get rid of the evil eye. Okay. In here, this is the, um, the, the temple at the top. In the bottom, there's a temple and underneath. Mm -hmm. But at the top, there's a temple okay. and the stage also. So the... Uh, the mayor of the city or the council of the city, if they want to make an announcement or speech, they will climb up to the top and speak to the crowd where everybody will gather up here. Okay. And even the acoustic here is very beautiful. Listen, this is, I will speak a little bit loud and you can hear the acoustic here. Caesar, we are here. Wow. <laughs> very you, nice acoustic you, here. You brought me back, you brought me back in time. Again, if you look at the wall, you can see the holes in the wall. These are reconstructed walls here. And the holes there to stick the marble because everything was marbleized. Ah, yes. The walls, the floor, yeah. everything was covered with marble. So you, you can imagine. Same again, no expense saved. It was all spent, whatever, exactly. whatever this place needed, the, the Caesar was ready to spend it. Yeah. Wow. So this is show you how big is the city and how many people used to live here also. Now it's time to tell you because you see, this is the scale of the city here. Now they said at its peak at the end of the third century, around about maybe um, uh, 80 to 100,000 people used to live in town here. Okay. That's a, a large That's number a lot, for this town. Yes, a lot. It's like what they like a, what they fill a football stadium now. Exactly. Like, you know, yeah, yes. for such a place. I have to try what you tried. My name is Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> I hear the acoustics are talking about. I felt grand. I felt like Caesar. It's amazing. So now behind this wall, also the, the shops in here, there's another building, beautiful building. Right now it's been closed up. 
okay because it's got a very unique decoration uh, and marble so now since uh, there's not too many people are visiting nowadays they, they close it up okay but inside this place called basilica it's a very beautiful place okay basilica it's a roman place originally built as a court of law later when the byzantine people came uh, they converted this place to a church okay let's go and see it we have to see this place i think from the outside we can take a picture from the outside but inside it's not, it's not it's open not, for public right okay now. okay yeah. Okay. Making our way to the uh, uh, old fort. This is the oldest part of Lipsis Magna. Yes. Uh, we're talking uh, chronologically, order. This is the oldest place in Lipsis Magna. So we're taking a step back. Step back. Exactly. And we're, we're, at, we're at a crossroads here as well. What's going on here? This is another thing? alley, like a, a small alley it's here. Street. But if you look down straight this way here, okay, that will lead us. Okay, let's look behind you again. Yeah, this is the, all the way to the big arch, the Severus Arch. Oh, so where we began our journey. Exactly, morning, exactly. Okay. But uh, there's two small arches in the way here. One belongs to uh, the Emperor Trajan and the other one belongs to Emperor uh, Tiberius. Okay. okay, so these are small arches in between. Okay, Mahmoud, so we're going into this different era and time. Yes, this is the oldest part of the city here. This is where the Phoenician lived here in the first place. Mm -hmm. And when the Roman came, they discovered, uh, they built at the top of the Phoenician city here. And the Roman and the, and the Byzantine built at the top of the Roman, and the story goes on. Okay. Okay. So yeah, yeah, the latest excavation done here in early 1960 by the people from the University of Pennsylvania from America. Uh, these people they came here and they did some digging around that area, mm -hmm. and what they found underneath Phoenician housing and the Roman built at the top of it. Okay. okay? So they actually just wiped out the history of the old civilization exactly. beforehand and just built straight on top. Yes. Of it. Now, what you see at the top here is mostly Roman. Uh, what we have here, we have a Byzantine church here to the right, and then we have three temples, uh, Lepropater Temple, Roman Augustus Temple, and Hercules Temple. Three temples in a row here. Okay, I suppose the Romans would, would worship the different gods yes. and the different, this was their yes. myth, uh, mythology or, yes. or, or theology at that time. Yes, and, um, uh, you can see these, the columns here. Columns, yes, these are all belongs to the temples. They are not being restored yet. Okay, so these are columns, bases, capitals. Everything belongs to these temples from here. Someday we might see them stand again. Exactly. Uh, over there we have the uh, another basilica mm -hmm. for the uh, during the Roman time. Here in the middle here, when this area, as I told you, at, by the end of the sixth century, uh, the, the Byzantine people they had to leave that part of the city and come and live here in the old form. And they okay. built a big wall around them. They called it the Byzantine Wall, seven meters high. Why they came here? Because there were a lot of uh, barbarian tribes used to attack them all the time. So in order to be safe and live in peace, they had to build a, a big wall around them and to protect them here. Okay, I see. And that was called the Byzantine Wall. Yeah, Byzantine Wall. Okay. Uh, another place here, they built a church here. And also they have a baptistry in this area here. Where we, where? Yeah, here, a baptistry during the Byzantine period also. All the newborns would have been uh, yes. washed and baptized. Baptized, and, okay. okay. Now we are very close to the sea. As you can see behind these little hills I is can, the I, sea. I can smell it. I yeah. can smell it before I see it. Yes. But like a beautiful uh, The harbor is breeze. very close. The harbor is very, very close here. This is the closest uh, area to the harbor. Okay. So the harbor, line. old form goes together. The lifeline of the of the city. Yes. The lifeline would have been the, the, yes. the harbor. Yes. Where, 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 where do we go next? Now just to, to give you uh, an idea where we are, we're gonna go by the sea just to see how, how far we are from the sea and to, to have a close view to the harbor also. Okay, let's see, let's do that. Such a fresh atmosphere. Yeah. We're out at the sea now. Okay, now uh, this is the, um, the very close point to the sea from here. To the right side, you can see the entrance of the harbor from here and the two lighthouses. Okay. Uh, also, a very close 
view to the theater from here, as you can see, very far from here. A lot of area still buried with columns and stones and everything. So you can go miles and miles from here, and a sure thing you're gonna find something underneath. Treasures, so, yeah, everything. History. Remember in the beginning I said 60% of Lipta is still buried? Yeah. I, I, I meant it. This is where most of it is still happening. Still, still buried. Still buried. Amazing. We can see a lot of ruins and monuments still hidden underneath. Wow, wow. And over there, is that the, that's the lighthouse? Yes. Okay. That's the lighthouse over there. And another one to the, to the left also. Okay. And I'm sure if they, they do some uh, digging here, very close to the shore, they found some treasures uh, being sank into the water or anything. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. That's the new city, Kums. Uh, in the summertime, that, well, I'm one of them. I, we, we do a lot of jogging from the city, uh, from the, the new along. city to the old city, some of the sites and go back here along the shores. Very nice in the summer here. Maybe you'll come back to Lips Magna like um, uh, Septimus Sephiros <laughs> as an emperor. <laughs> one day. Yeah, let's hope so. Huh? Okay, beautiful. <laughs>